What is up guys? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. On today's Shop Talk video, we are talking about the Bauer Right Angle Grinder. Is this thing any good? I'm going to give you guys a true review on this deal. No BS and about a bunch of stats and things like that. We're putting it to work. Alright, I told you guys I was going to give you a true review on this thing. And the way that I'm able to do that is, I've already got one. And I've already put probably close to 100 hours on it or so, I would say. Had it for about 6 months and I use it all the time. Got probably 20 hours or so just right in this area. So I know full well at this point what it's capable of. And I guess probably the fact that I've got another one sitting here in the box tells you guys pretty much all you need to know at this point. But I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. I'll show you guys what you get with the thing and I'll uh, tell you about a couple things that I don't like about it. So right off the bat, obviously you get instructions and nobody needs those. You get the little guard thing. Yeah, unless you're letting your kids use it or whatever. Probably don't need that either. You do get a handle. And we might save the handle. That could be handy at some point. And you get to give you the little wrench thing. Yeah, don't really need that unless you got 12-year-old girl hands or something. Then, of course, you got the grinder, which is the whole reason why we're here in the first place. So, right off the bat, pulling out of the box... It's got pretty good weight to it and everything. The cord is a pretty decent shape, and I like this particular style and this particular model of them for the pistol grip or whatever you want to call that, the single hand operation or whatever. I find that for what I do pretty handy. So that's the main reason why I bought this style right here. They actually have one at Harbor Freight that's a little bit bigger, and they also have one that's a little bit smaller. This is kind of the mid range, but it's that whole grip thing is why I have it. So. First of all, right off the bat, the biggest bitch that I have is probably this nut right out there on the end. And I'll show you. I saved the nut off of an old DeWalt one. I'll just put them like this. And you can see the black one there is the DeWalt one. And it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit thicker. And it's got a knurl on the outside of it. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal and difference really, but... It's enough that when you're trying to use it with your hands in a glove or something like that, this little teeny tiny one doesn't, you know, doesn't work real well with gloves on and stuff. That actually works a lot better. So that's probably my biggest bitch right off the bat. And I guess since I told you about the other bitch, I'll go ahead and tell you about the next one that I have. And that's this little fan that's right here in the side of it. They have to have that to cool the motor, obviously. But the way this one is orientated, I'm right-handed and when you're holding this in your right hand and your most you know common position or whatever that you're going to be using it it seems like it blows all of the air coming out of that motor right up towards your head and you know if you're doing something that's making a lot of dust you know then you're gonna to have to breathe all of that or if it's smoke or whatever it's just all going right up towards your face even throw some sparks up that way too so I kind of find that a little inconvenient and I don't really like that. So that's probably my other biggest bitch about it. But having that said, everything else about it seems like it's pretty decent. Like I said, I've got about a hundred hours or so on this one and I've been pretty impressed with it. The price is awesome. So you can't bitch about the price. The other thing that I'm curious and we're going to find out here in just a second. When I bought this one, I was using an old DeWalt that the bearings were out of and it was so loud that you pretty much had to have ear protection on just to hit the trigger. Well, this one, when I got it, I'd forgot how quiet a new one was and I was really impressed with how quiet it is. So now that I've got a bunch of time on this one, I'm really curious to plug it in and the new one in both side by side and see how much of a difference there is and how much bearing noise and stuff there is in this one. So I'll go ahead and give that a shot and see how that turns out for it. All right, so I got the two ready to do some testing. I probably should have done this beforehand, but I'm just kind of curious how much play there is there. I mean, there might be just a scotch more in the used one. Not much, so that's a pretty good sign. So we can go ahead and hit the buttons and see what the bearings sound like. It's important to know what the bearings sound like because that's going to give us a clue on longevity of the bearings. So let's see. That is our used one. Might be a little growl in there. There 
there's a little growl in there. I'm not going to lie. But like I said, I do have 100-ish or so hours on here. So it's still pretty quiet overall. I'm just being uber particular about it if I'm trying to call it out for anything. But I think overall, that seems like it's probably going to last still quite a little while. So that's probably a pretty good sign. I think now the next thing that we could do is just take and bury this thing in some metal and just see what it'll do. I could give you guys all the stats and everything, but unless you really, really are into knowing all of the kind of stuff that, you know, electric motors do and how they react with different amperages and all that kind of thing, then it really doesn't mean anything. So real world is let's just bury it in some metal and see if it quits. So let me set that up for you and we'll see how that goes. So for this test, I've got a piece of 14 gauge, nothing too heavy, and I've just got a regular cutoff wheel in there. I am going to use the old one because why not? Let's see if it's got any uh, issues with holding up still. So let's go ahead and just whack through here. I'm going to press it in as hard as I possibly can. Hopefully I don't blow the blade up, so we'll see how it goes. Well, that went pretty quick. Damn near used up all my blade. <laughs> Pushing a little too hard. Let's try it one more time. Woo. Okay, so obviously that was not the correct way to cut a piece of metal, and I know that, but I was trying to stall the motor for you guys, and I could not get it to stall. All it did was just hook and grab and blow the blade up. So I have no complaints on power for this thing. Well, I think that's about all I can tell you guys about the Bauer 1864E-B grinder. Basically, 30, 40 bucks, I approve. I think that's a pretty good deal. So if you guys liked the video and got anything out of it, do me a favor, smash the like button down there below. That helps out the channel a bunch. And maybe consider going over and checking out some of our other builds, like our hooker and blow build here on the table, our 1946 Chevy for SEMA. And also hit the subscribe button and the little bell beside it so you get the notifications of when our next videos of tool reviews or builds come out. I guess with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'll see you on the next one.